Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant. Oh, and guest dogs in the background somewhere. Yeah, Truffle. I don't know if you could see her. She's in her bag. Uh, with a screenwriter's rant on Star Wars. Oh, Jesus. Look. Star Wars is a franchise that is just now, in my view, a corporate asset. That's all it is. Now, it may mean something more to you, if you're a fan. I am a fan of the old movies, and uh, I was a fan of Star Wars for a while. But the thing is, these things always kind of run the same way. Hey, I'm trying to do the thing. Sit over here. Here, sit over here and shut up. I'm trying to think. Anyhow, um, the companies that own these franchises ultimately want to make money. Now, whether they make money by making the franchises good or betting against it, that's different entirely. Why are you got in your hair, Joan? What the heck do you put it? Where are you putting your head? Ugh. So. We've got this situation now where there was rumors, and Doomcock did a video today about it. A rumor that they're going to somehow create a multiverse and uh, uh, turn Star Wars into something different, right? So, like, the idea would be, oh, those, those three movies you saw, and it, it, they don't count. Um, first off, I don't think that could work. Let's, let's imagine that's exactly what they're doing, right? They're setting us all up to reveal, ah, that was one universe. This is another universe. And then we get to see, I don't know, Mark Hamill as a good guy again, and Han Solo isn't dead, and Princess Leia died a hero everything you wanted to see every every star wars nerds dream come true and they even bring back some of the prequel characters like jar jar he's still around and he and, and like he's cool now like it's all it's all amazing let's imagine they do that it still won't be good because the other stuff will still exist and even if they said no 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 we've we've done some magic MacGuffin thing and those worlds no longer exist Ray no longer exists everything that happened in those movies didn't happen somebody goes back in time <laughs> and undoes those movies still doesn't matter they already put those movies out they already tainted the fan base with them. Whether people like those movies or not, right? And keep in mind, there is a fan base who liked those movies. They went to see them, and they liked them. Most of them are probably people who didn't see any of the original Star Wars or even the prequels. They just heard, oh, Star Wars, what is this? They're young. Maybe their family sent them. Or, or took them. And for whatever reason, they love them. Now, typically kids have a very low bar. They just like things. They like to be included in things. <laughs> Did you ever see a kid uh, go to the movies and say, that was a terrible movie? They don't really have that discernment. They're just happy to be there. Like my dog. It's about on the level of my dog. Dogs, they can get to a level about a two-year-old or a three-year-old. Kids aren't much more advanced than that. My dog would be happy if I took her to the movies because she'd be seeing people and smelling things. Maybe somebody would give her a piece of a pretzel. Oh my God, what a day. Kids are kind of like that, only slightly more advanced. They're not movie critics. They're going to watch things and go, oh, this is fun. This is fun, Dad or Mom or whomever. We're having a good time. You're smiling, therefore I'm happy. That's the way kids are. So, 
there will be a a portion of those kids who really like the movie. Now, some of them will grow up and they'll say, oh, I like those. I, I think my parents took me to see those. And then they'll watch them again and go, God, these are awful. <laughs> these are terrible. Well, I was a little kid. I've done that with some of the things I watch. I've looked back and I go, oh, that's not how I remember it. I remember this being really cool. But there's nothing you could do about that nostalgia. Most people, they skim the surface of things like this because they have bigger fish to fry. Now, in the old days, sci-fi, movies like this were way on the back burner, so far back. So even people who liked movies looked down upon Star Wars. They looked down upon the fandom. People within the sci-fi fandom looked down upon Star Wars. Ah, oh, that's for jocks. That's for that's for sci-fi fans that don't know sci-fi. The kind of people we have now in terms of the fandom are normies. This has been diluted to the point that normies can kind of get into it. But in that delusion, uh, del dissolution in diluting um, you've ruined it for the more discerning sci-fi fan it's you know it's just ruined again I walked out of the Phantom Menace threw up my hands and went I'm out that was a Phantom Menace uh, so compared to Phantom Menace to the last three movies they did to Solo. Uh, looks like freaking Shakespeare. So, the brand was never going to live up to what it was. Under any circumstances. Even if Fravbro had been the first director they contacted, ESG never happened. In, a, in another universe, this, this totally happened. John Fravbro was the director after the prequels. Uh, let's say... Let me go even further back. In the 90s, George Lucas didn't uh, punt punt away his entire legacy by going into Metachlorians or whatever the hell they are. Still wouldn't have been as good. It just wouldn't. Star Wars isn't just, let's say, a movie. It was a moment in time. It was a phenomenon. Phenomenons happen because not just because of what they are. They happen because of the timing. There are other great movies that, had they come out at a different time, slightly different, not, e not even much, slightly different, a different holiday, a different week, oh my God, they would, have, they would have changed the face of cinema. But because they came out the way they did, they, they didn't make that big of an impact. And they kind of, maybe they become a cult classic. Maybe they become one of these forgotten movies you catch and go, wow, this was really good. So, if Star Wars, back in the 70s, had it been delayed for some reason, and somebody else had put out a similar movie, a sci-fi epic, maybe even a, just a fantasy movie at that time, on the same week, that could have captured the imagination of people. Could have blown up, and Star Wars could have been forgotten. And, again, there's new stuff on the horizon every day. Why are we insisting, as the fans, to keep saving these people? Who are these people? These aren't fans. It's not like the people who run Star Wars and act in them were like the biggest Star, For Star Wars fan in the world. And, and, and they dedicated their lives to Star Wars and eventually they got into the Star Wars company to make Star Wars. It's nothing like that. And in fact, Hollywood is quite the opposite today. Hollywood, we've seen time and time again, they sit down and they go, Hey, you want to uh, work on Star Wars? Oh, Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. I've read all the books. Oh, sorry. We can't use you. <laughs> We're going to interview somebody else. Hey, second person, would you like to work on Star Wars? Star Wars. I'm not very familiar with that. Uh, that's a movie, right? You're perfect. 
We want a completely new look, a new feel, a new Star Wars. That's the way Hollywood tends to think and has thought, at least in the current era. Look at Marvel Comics, also owned by Disney. They hired people who had never written comics before, who essentially hated superheroes, hated Marvel. Couldn't wait to have them gallop into Marvel Comics and do untold amount of damage to their IPs. And they still are doubling down, telling us, no, no, that's been great. No, it hasn't been great. They've destroyed Marvel Comics. But that was kind of inevitable because the alternative, and again, you could always look at comics for these things, the alternative would have been what? It would have been, we would have kept going on with Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the Avengers, and all these characters. They would have kept going forward exactly as they went forward before. And people just would have gotten sick of them. And eventually the fans would have said, we need something different. And they would have done something different and everybody would have hated it. Because most fans don't want something different. They want something different, but they want the same. They want what they can't have. And since all the creators are dead, in comics anyway, it would have been a hopeless, hopeless situation. Unless they were, you know, Stan Lee in the 90s lost his damn mind and hired me and said, ah, do what you want with Spider-Man. <laughs> and I got to work on Spider-Man for 20 years and it, and I turned it into my own thing. That wasn't going to happen either. That wasn't going to happen even with guys who were famous in comics. These things have a window of time. And then that's what makes them great, really. Look at the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four, again, I urge you to go back and read the old Kirby's. It's amazing. It's an amazing comic. They've never be a, been able to do the damn movie. Uh, maybe they'd have a shot with a TV show. Even in the comics, they never, never quite captured what Kirby could do. Even John Byrne, who did a decent run. He, he merely kind of aped Kirby and it was okay. You can't go back in time. You can't fix Star Wars. It's unfixable. It never... The only thing you could have done is not ruin it at a much slower rate. The only thing you could have done is said to George Lucas, Disney could have said to George Lucas, we cannot do Star Wars without you. Out you. We will give you a pile of money, but you must make the next sequels and write the scripts and everything. And you have to be in charge. That's the only thing they could have done. And they probably would have been terrible. <laughs> uh, they might have been closer to the prequels, but they probably would have been awful. So, it it's time has passed. The time to make a Star Wars sequel or prequel, gosh, would have been, I don't know, late 80s then maybe maybe you could have con continued the series somehow maybe you could have done a sequel and kept it going you could have brought back all the actors were alive you could have brought them all back and passed the torch to some other characters I mean look at what they've done in Indiana Jones Indiana Jones they tried to pass the torch to a younger actor and it blew up in their faces was that because the movie was bad? Yeah, it was, wasn't was great. Um, if they had, even if they had done it better, it wouldn't have been a hit. Not like the original Indiana Jones. There's a timing to it that the studios will never ever recreate. They've been trying to since their inception. Everybody tries to create a phenomenon. You can't Create it. It just happens. It's unpredictable. I work for the guys at Kenzer and Company. 
they had a phenomenon on their hands in the gaming world called Knights of the Dinner Table magazine. Fans loved their comic. They absolutely adore it. I used to go with them on cons, and they would do readings of the comic book with the fans, and 500 people would show up to the readings, or more. It was absolutely rock star status in that world. There were other comics that came out right around that time that didn't hit like that. They were popular, but they didn't hit like Knights of the Dinner Table did. Uh, there was one called Nodwick. It was pretty good. I think there was another one. I forget the name. Um, they had a fan base, but not like Knights of the Dinner Table while I was there. They were fanatics. Uh, I tried to talk them into... Tried to tried to pull together a TV show pitch for it, but nah, it didn't quite work out for various reasons. Um, it, you, it's a moment in time. And everything sort of has to come together. Star Wars is over. And has been for a long time. Now the question is, how can we make things better for the fandom in general? Forget about Star Wars in particular. How can we get out of this mess? This mess of corporate guys who just ran over your franchise and purposely destroyed it. How can we get them on board with trying to maintain it for as long as possible? And maybe, I know this is crazy, ending it before it, it dies on the vine. Unfortunately, that is something I don't know how we could convince them of that, but that would have been great to plan George Lucas's prequels and sequels. Not, he had plans for that, nine movies, and end it and be done forever and move on to something new. Instead, what we've gotten is an endless parade of, ooh, we could base something off of this. Ooh, can't wait for the reboot. Multiverse. Ah, Star Wars forever. Do you really want Star Wars forever? Do you think people a hundred years from now will watch Star Wars and go, Wow, this really spoke to me. When did this all start? I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think it's Shakespeare. And at least Shakespeare is done mostly the same way it was done hundreds of years ago not constant well there are some reinterpretations but for the most part it's considered a classic and they stick to the classic lines so i think the way to fix the fandom or at least create a real uh wariness by these corporations not to f the fandom outright and there's got to be some give and take here, understand. Like, you can't expect too much from these people. They have to make money. They don't want to lose money to just do your dream project. But setting that aside for a minute, what can we do in the fandom to create a sense that these people, the studios, won't just go... Ah, F the fans. We'll, we'll make this woke. They'll have to watch it. There's nothing else. We own Star Wars. We don't want that attitude. We want them to go, well, the fans are expecting certain things, so we have to provide them with that. Not that they would slavishly listen to us, because that's bad too, but that they would at least kind of be wary about changing too many things. There's a movement afoot with the latest uh, woke disaster at Bud Light to boycott Budweiser, Bud Light, and Heiser Bush uh, until they essentially cry uncle, until they're broken. The idea was from Matt Walsh, and uh, the concept is to uh, boycott one thing effectively. As opposed to trying to boycott everything and, and really not having much of an impact. To boycott one thing. To metaphorically take a scalp 
set it up under the mantelpiece and then wait for the next potential cancellation suspect, right? So the idea would be everybody boycotts Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser, and they lose so much money, they either go out of business or they come begging on their knees for forgiveness for what they've done recently with their stupid, stupid, stupid campaign. I propose we do the same thing to Star Wars specifically. To boycott it to the point at which Disney realizes if we don't start listening to the fans, we're effed. Until literally Disney cancels everything Star Wars and puts it back in the vault for the next 20 years. Because if that happened number one it would send a strong message to an already weakened Disney number two it would send a strong message because Star Wars isn't just one random franchise you there are lots of franchises that are owned by Disney but Star Wars costs them a billion dollars and it is very high profile and if it went away like really went away like no more games no more shows no more movies not for a while you're probably not going to see it for the next 20 years kind of boycott that would send the message i think that would knock them for a loop and say okay we we can't do this we can't keep woken up all our material we can't keep changing everything up for the sake of changing we have to go with good ideas that are in line with what the product is. And it's not just Star Wars you would be saving. You would be saving other movie adaptations into TV shows or TV shows into movies or books into movies and TV shows and comics into movies and TV shows. The next time one of the Marvel comics would come up, they would say, okay, we're going to do this as close to the comic as possible as they did in the early marvel phase one most of those movies i would say were at least within the spirit of the comics they were based after they weren't necessarily exactly like them but they were close enough that people went wow this is really like watching a movie from a marvel comic book now that's not the case. Now it's a bunch of woke nonsense. Well, one could argue it is like watching it a Marvel comic, a current one that sucks. Um, but we need to push back on them so they don't listen to everybody who wants to come in and make a mark. Instead, they listen to the creators or, or someone like Chris Claremont, who didn't create the X-Men, but he did create some of the characters and he made the X-Men what they were. He made them popular through his work. So, look, I'm so sick of talking about Star Wars. I'm sure the, the nerd community will be up in arms over this latest thing about Rey. But I think if we boycotted Star Wars, uh, and, for instance, it got so bad, if, if they actually go through with these three movies, it may be a ploy, I don't know. But it got so bad that they start making these movies and then they have to cancel them? Or they have to stop after the first one? Imagine the message that would send to Disney about people who would own Disney in the future and run the company. They would say... Well, first, they'd probably say, well, we're not going to do Star Wars for, for, for now or ever. But the next time they had some sort of fan-related thing, they're not just going to say, well, screw the fans. Who cares what they want? They'll say, well, wait a minute. What do fans want on this thing? Do we have a guy who's well-versed in the mythos here? Because we need a guy who's well-versed in the mythos. 
Can we bring in the original writer of the book or the comic? Somebody who's really steeped in it. I think that would work. A lot of you might say, but I love Star Wars. Do you love Star Wars? Are you loving what they did to the Mandalorian? They gave you a taste of what could have been, and then they took it away from you. And for my money, it's not even that good. For these things to work, for something like Star Wars to work, it would have had to have been, here, just take it and run with it. Take, run with it for five seasons. Do it. Do your best. Do fun stories that everybody can enjoy. Not make it so insanely important that literally every show people are analyzing it. Not put so much money on the line that you, 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 you just... It's, it's just too much. Everything about the current Star Wars, everything about Disney production in general, I think, it's just too much. It's overproduced. They would be better off with half the budget. It would at least force them to think once in a while, geez, we can't do that. How can we make it look like that without actually doing it? That was part of filmmaking at one point. Now it's like, well, we need to do this. Okay, let's move that mountain. I need that mountain 40 feet to the left. They'll do it. Um, so, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, I think, is eventually going to go. Maybe not. Now now with this new announcement of Ray and another three movies, if that's even true. But I think it's time, until we get a real deal on the table, until we get people who, like, for my money... The person who should be running Star Wars should be some guy who's like a Star Wars scholar. Or George Lucas. George Lucas should really be running a damn thing. You know, if you got to keep Star Wars. Or here's something crazy. How about something new? <laughs> How about Disney take $100, $100 million and say, eh, let's spread it around to some filmmakers who are pretty talented and see what they come up with. Let's have a contest online, make a short film, maybe we'll turn it into a TV show. What happened to that? You know, Adult Swim did that not too long ago, a few years back, and they got a bunch of cool cartoons out of it. Uh, they had it on their website, and then eventually some of them turned into real shows. Some of them were good, some of them not so good, but that's the risk you take. So I say boycott Star Wars. I know. I'm already out of Star Wars. It's no big deal to me. But I think that would be the strategic move. Make Star Wars the Bud Light of the uh, nerd world and ban it. Take a scalp, nerds. Uh, let's take we'll take the Star Wars scalp and say to the studios, no more. And that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. For our more base takes, if you can get a more base take than that, I say take it. I'll be at uh, Geek Fest tomorrow from 2 to 3. I'll be doing a panel and that's it. Uh, doing my talk on the Jersey Devil. If I'm lucky, I may get to sell some books, but I probably won't be able to since I don't have a table. But if you have books, I'm happy to sign them. Uh, or you can meet me in the parking lot and uh, <laughs> maybe I could sell you some out of my trunk. Hope to see you there. Otherwise, we'll see you for the live stream later tomorrow.